So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a little trick when working with a for each component. Um, so first of all, we have a variable here. It's an array. It has two properties for each item, the name of the item and the value of the item. And the idea is basically that we have an action chain where we're assigning values into this array. And the values are kind of a um, combination of a name of a field and the value of the field. So we have the first name, the last name, and the salary, for example. And this is what we're putting into this array. So now let's go to our page. And we're going to start by dropping a button on the page. And this button would populate the data. Okay. And so we're going to add an event here that will be calling this um, action chain that populates the array. And then when the array is populated, we can use a for each component that we drop over here. And inside the for each, we're going to have an input text component, for example, inside here. All right, so inside the for each, we can reference um, the current item. Uh, but before we do that, let's first of all look at our for each and bind it into this array variable that we have. Okay, so now it's based on the array. The array right now is empty, but if we click the button, the array is populated with three records and we get three fields here. Okay, now in each one of those fields, we want to show the value of the field. So the nice thing is that we can go to the data and we can reference the current data and, for example, the value. So this would show us the values. And we can use the same trick, by the way, to also specify the label. So the label would basically be the name of the field. right? So it would be first, last, and salary. So now you can see those are populated dynamically. Now, what happens if we actually want to do an update here and we want to save the results of the update? So um, when we do an update, we want to pass in information about which field is actually doing the update because all of those fields are basically the same field here. So to do that, we're going to do a little trick. I'm going to take the input text component and we're going to add an event on it when value change. Okay, so when the value change, we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is we're going to fire a notification right now um, just to say, okay, this is the new value, right? So we can um, go over here and say something like new value is, okay? And over here, we can reference the value because that's something that we get into uh, our um, event into our action chain, right? So if we go back to our page designer and go to live and change the value of Jeff, we had another F, leave the field, and we see the new value is Jeff. But the thing is that we don't know if this was done in this first name field or whether this was done in this field. So for example, if I do F here, again, I know that this is the new value, but I don't know which field actually fires up this. So to do that, we're going to do one more thing, which is when we look at our input text and the event, the value change event on it, right now we're just passing the value as an input parameter. We can add another input parameter here. Right? So um, we're going to go to uh, the action. Okay. And we can see there's a value as an input parameter. We can add another one. And we can call this one field name, for example. Okay. So now we have another input parameter. If we go back to the page designer, we now need to map the value over here. So it's pretty easy. We're going to map the field name into the current data. And we know that it's the current data dot name. So this would be the field name. So now if we go back to the action chain that actually files the notification, okay, we can modify this little thing over here to include our new field name. So if we do something like that, plus and the field name. 
which is an input parameter. All right, so let's go back into our page designer, go into live, click the button, and if I change the salary, for example, it would say, tell me new value is for salary and the new value. So now we know which component fire up the event and we can process it accordingly. One more thing that we can do, by the way, is we can do this not just with input fields, we can do it with other components as well. For example, if we go over and we add a button to each one of those um, components, okay? Um, so maybe this is like um, a save or something like that over here. Okay, so again, we want to know which of those saves were pushed. So to do that, um, we are going to define an event when we press the button. Okay, and then in the event, we're going to add an input parameter, which would tell us field name. And just like before, we can go back to our page. Um, show us the button and pass a variable over here. And again, it can be the same current data and the field name, for example. All right. So now again, when we're pressing the button, we're going to know which button was pressed so we can process it. For example, again, we can say something like, button pressed next to and in the message we can use um, our field name variable that we got to our action and again set this for example to be an info and let's look at our page in action popular diary if we click next to last name i'm gonna say button press next to last okay if we do it for the save it's going to be for the salary here so this is how you can pass additional information as parameters into an action chain and use them in a for each scenario